The story of oil producing communities in the Federal Republic of Nigeria is one that is very well known to many. The agitation in the country's Niger Delta region that came to a head with militancy that affected the mainstay of the national economy for several years is still a living experience. Many rightly blame this challenge on the takeover of revenue resources from the federating units by the federal government in 1966 when the military intervention on January 15 ended the First Republic and eventually led to the 30-month Nigerian civil war between 1967 and 1970. Records show that the federating units then known as the regions were collecting 100% of revenue on resources in their territories and remitting just about 30% to the federal government in pre-independent Nigeria. This was, however, revealed to 50% in the 1960 independence constitution and the 1963 republican constitution until the military regime of General Agui Ronsi promulgated Decree 34 of May 24, 1966, that introduced a unitary system of government in Nigeria and made the federating units dependent on the now infamous uh, federation account where the federal government collects revenues on resources derived from the federating units and shares among the three tiers of government, retaining 52.68% for itself. This simply means that by 1967, which was about 11 years after the country discovered crude in commercial quantities, the federating units, now referred to as the states, with oil-producing communities that should have benefited from revenues on oil exports from their territories, had to depend on what they could get from the federation account. The revenue formula for sharing monies from the federation account revealed the derivation allocation to 45% in 1969, 20% in 1975, 1.5% 1 in 1982, and 1.0% 1 in 1990, and then 3.0% in 1992, with the establishment of the Oil Minerals Producing Areas Development Commission, OMPADEC, by the military regime of General Ibrahim Babangida. This was after the contentious Ogoni Bill of Rights was adopted on August 26, 1990, following the mobilization and advocacy of the environment activist Ken Sarawiwa to put pressure on the federal government and demand for action. The 3.0% derivation of 1992 was negotiated at the Constitutional Conference convened in 1994 by the military regime of then Head of State General Sani Abacha. The 13% agreed upon at the conference that ended in 1995 eventually made its way into the country's 1999 constitution as amended, providing in section 162, subsection 2, that the president, upon the receipt of advice from the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, shall table before the National Assembly proposals for revenue allocation from the Federation account. And in determining the formula, the National Assembly shall take into account the allocation principles, especially those of population, equality of states, internal revenue generation, land mass, terrain, as well as population density, provided that the principle of derivation shall be constantly reflected in any approved formula as being not less than 13% of the revenue accruing to the Federation account directly from any natural resources. Hello and welcome. This is Straight Talk. I am TV Tiav in Abuja, the Nigerian capital. The nine oil producing states of the Niger Delta region have since May 29, 1999, when the country 1999 constitution came into force, being receiving 13% of the oil revenues derived from their respective states. 
The nine Niger Delta states include Akwaibom, Payalsa, Cross River, Delta, Edo and Rivers in the South-South geopolitical zone, Abia and Imo in the Southeast geopolitical zone, and Ondo in the Southwest geopolitical zone. In the 15 years of 1999 to 2014, a total of 4.2 trillion naira, which is just 700 million naira less than the country's entire 2014 national budget, was disbursed to the nine Niger Delta states as 13% of their derivation entitlement, with River State receiving the highest allocation of 1.03 trillion naira. Akwaibom State, 910 billion naira. Delta State, 792.5 billion naira. Bayelsa State, 721.9 billion naira. And Ondo State, 176.7 billion naira. The others are Imo State, 57 billion naira. Edo State, 47.1 billion naira. Abia State, 46.9 billion naira, with Cross River State picking up 38.7 billion naira before it lost its oil producing status on August 14, 2008, following the ceding of the oil rich Bakase Peninsula to the Republic of Cameroon. What you are looking at is one of the gas installations in uh, Owaza community in Abia State, uh, Southeast Nigeria, where gas is still being fled uh, in the midst of a community where people are residing and carrying on with their businesses. Obviously, this poses a head hazard to the residents here as we speak. Located off the Aba Potakot Expressway, Owaza is about the major oil producing community in the only three local government areas that produce crude oil and gas in Abia State, Southeast Nigeria. The three councils are Ukwa West, Ukwa East, and Uguanabo local government areas. The major roads in Owaza town have been constructed with some street lighting, and a first-time visitor to the community will easily conclude that all is well. The major employment for most of the youths here is the commercial motorcycle business with farming off the table for many of them following the oil installations that have taken up most of the farmlands and then gas flaring that continues to endanger the lives of plants and even human beings. Owaza is the oil, the oil producing community in Abia State, the only oil producing community in Abia State apart from Umori. So we have about 150 something wells here. But if you look at the community, you will see that it is not showing that we are a producing community. You are just coming. If you stay here like one hour, you will pull off this shirt. You understand me? You, you will be sweating. You will be sweating seriously. You pull off this shirt. And if you see all our zincs, like for example, watch those zincs on that side. You see all these zincs are black finished. Look at them. Look at them there. You understand me? They are black because of the gas flare, because of the flare. You understand me? So our agricultural products are not doing well. You understand me? Uh -huh. Because this oil is extracting from the soil. You understand me? So the, our soil are not uh, uh, producing, they are not fertile again. So they are not producing something. So we are suffering here. Came from, from the, Patakot. The workers, so those working in yeah. Oil, where do they come from? From, from uh, Patakot, from River State. From River State. Every day. Every day. They, they use their vehicle them. and carry them to, to come to the work every day. We are the youth, is nothing. If you go to Shea now, no big staff there from our here. Even we are not the ordinary gate man. If you go there now, you can't see the youth. The former side, Imo State, all this Ogoni, Calab, just like that. Bias. So that is that. Share like Wala. Understand? What we do, share go tag us or nothing. We are many times, we are Jews. Because sometimes with the vet, we go block road, under Shea, make the guns do so. But what we do like that, they will use the army. And chase us, say we are militants. Yeah. Understand? Hey, that's why we keep calm. And when they go settle our king, then, then the king will not 
the islands. She has started the exploration in this community since 1958. And since that 1958, I can tell you authoritatively that no single youth has been employed from this community. It is disheartening. I think nobody will hear it and will accept that it can be true. But that is the truth. Since 1958, we have hundreds of graduates in this community. They have not employed a single person. And since um, uh, around um, September last year, Total also started their own exploration. And since that September, till as I'm speaking with you now, they have not employed anybody. What I see here is marginalization. They marginalize youth. They marginalize the community. Even government itself is careless about us. Even the oil company itself is very, very careless about us. They don't even know whether we are existing or we are not existing. So before this oil company came to us, Unless they find out one of their two, one or one of their two oil installation or anything got lost, they will come into community. Uh, please come and check to us this, that, that. But to give us employment, we don't see a thing like that. We don't receive that kind of thing. The complaints by youth of Owaza in Abia State are the same across the length and breadth of the Niger Delta region. And we can say authoritatively that the training of ex-militants under the amnesty program of the federal government was to address this challenge by empowering the youth with the skills that will lead to their integration and employment in the oil and gas sector and other industries. We are told a number of the youths have graduated even from training institutions and schools abroad. But what becomes of them is what we are yet to see and, as usual, told. The situation in Owaza is, however, hopeless. As not a single youth from the community benefited from the amnesty program. So there is no future that youths in the area will get jobs in oil companies operating in their community. At least we are one of the oil producing states. If you talk of Niger Delta, Abia State is among, you understand me? So when you are doing amnesty for another state, you have to count Abia State. So if somebody tells you that they are giving us a chance or chances about amnesty, it's very, very wrong because we have not seen anything amnesty here. If we are giving Abia State amnesty without ours, I don't think that is working because we are the people, we are the people that owns that oil. What they give us is uh, the security, pipeline security, uh, grass cutting jobs. They, feel, they, feel they treat us as third class citizens. So we have not benefited anything. Federal government, apart from NDDC, has given us one or two uh, roads, construct, roads that, are, that are being constructed in my community. Nothing to show for the oil exploration, the exploration and exploitation since 1958 in that community called Owaza. Nothing to show. No postgraduate scholarship. Not, no, none of our students or our children are trained in pipeline, on the water pipeline wedding. The, the skill acquisition programs that are ongoing in NIDETA were not part of it. The amnesty program, nobody from Owaza community is part of it. I, I stand to be challenged by either borrow himself or anybody from federal government, nobody from other community. This is the public primary school in Owaza community with the roof on most of the classrooms in very deplorable condition. It is unbelievable the kind of teaching and learning that can possibly take place in such an unhealthy school environment. The Owaza Central School is one of the first public institutions to be constructed in the community. But the new blocks of classrooms in the school that would grant access to basic education for most of the children have long been abandoned and overtaken by grasses. The others uh, that is coming here are just the plain half. Yeah. I just uh, uh, regard it as a, yeah, uh, this is a primary school that they are not uh, 
paying for yeah uh, for, school. Uh, uh, for school yeah now it's primary school look at our buildings that has been dilapidated so we have we need them to be renovated and uh, we need more structures the person who should provide answers to what has happened to the Waza Primary School and other infrastructure and facilities in the oil producing community is the governor of Abia State because the book stops squarely on his table. From 1999 till date, when the state started collecting 13% of oil derivation, Abia State, with the unfortunate case of Waza, has shown that it has been unable to address an issue as simple as the provision of classrooms in schools in oil producing communities across the state. Created on August 27, 1991, with 17 local government areas as are today, governance has been a major challenge in Abia State that has since 1999 been led by three governors, namely Oji Uzo Kalu from 1999 to 2007, Theodore Oji from 2007 to 2015, and the sitting governor, Okeze Ikpazu, who is yet to respond to our request for a media interview to address the mirage of development issues confronting the over 26-year-old state. We also visited the Abia State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, ASOPADEC, that was established in 2007 by then Governor Theodore Oji, who is now a senator of the Federal Republic. But then chairman of the commission, Emeka Stanley, was never forthcoming to talk about the issues and why the commission has failed the oil producing communities scattered across three of the 17 local government areas of the state for so long. We however met with the pioneer chairman of the commission, Sam Nwogu, who having been out of office, opened up on how oil producing communities are being cheated by the nine state government of the Niger Delta region. When I was the commissioner, the chairman of Asapadek, Asapadek derives uh, that 30% out of 30% out of 30% derivation. If you bring 30% that comes into Abia into 100%, we are giving 30%. What happens to the 70%? Ah, the states. You remember that before deception of the ALG's government, nobody was seeing the 100%. So the, the uh, oil producing community is agitated, following what is happening in other states, oil producing states, and then the ERG, being so McDonald's, came out with that, uh, uh, that, that commission and said, we'll give you 30%, you 30% to cushion the effect of the oil producing communities. And then we tried. We constructed roads. Though all we did was not much, was not more in the areas of oil producing communities only. We were, we were also, that's that we were also everywhere. In Delta State, South South Nigeria, the Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, DOSOPADEC, was also established in July 2007 like its sister organization in Abia State with a mandate, according to the state government, to, quote, rehabilitate, rejuvenate, and resuscitate the people and communities of the oil-producing areas of the state, end of quote. The law establishing the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, DESOPADEC, makes no pretense about how the organization will be funded with Section 13, Subsection 1 of the DESOPADEC law, stating in very clear terms that, quote, the commission shall receive and administer exclusively the 50% of the 13% oil derivation fund accruing to Delta State government, end of quote. Here too, like in Abia State, not all of the 13% derivation received by Delta State is channeled into the development of the real oil producing communities in the state. In fact, there are 25 local government areas in Delta State, but oil producing communities are located in only 13 of the councils, namely Wari North, Wari South, Burutu, Isoko North, Isoko South, Ogeli North, Ogeli South, Okwe, 
Etiop East, Etiop West, Sapele, Ndoka East, and Ndoka West local government areas. And going by the Dosopadek law, the oil producing communities in these 13 local councils share the 13% derivation the state receives on a 50 50 basis with the rest of the state that is made up of only 12 local government areas. So, in the 10 years that Dosopadek has existed, the story of the commission is that of abandoned projects across the oil producing communities in this state that ranks third amongst the nine Niger Delta states in the production of crude oil in the country. Like in all the oil producing states of the Niger Delta region, chairman of the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, Dosopadek, Williams Makinde, will also not talk about what is wrong or right with what the commission is doing. However, his remarks during an inspection of some of the abandoned projects speaks volumes. There's a significant uh, improvement on the project. And I'm believing on the concept. In fact, he started working before he got his uh, paper. That is already a sign of his uh, commitment to the project. It is very clear that while the rest of Nigeria believes it has been funding development in the country's oil producing communities with at least 13% derivation since 1999, this is not the true story on the ground in the Niger Delta region. For the close to 20 years that the nine states of Abia, Akwaibom, Bayalsa, Cross River, Delta, Edo, Imo, Ondo and Rivers in the Niger Delta region have received about 6 trillion naira in derivation, not up to half of this amount has been invested in addressing the infrastructure, facilities, amenities, and human development needs of the real oil producing communities in the respective states. Clearly, the state governments in the region should be held responsible for the continuous criminal neglect of the oil producing communities. And for as long as there is little or no investment in most of these communities, militancy in the region will not end. Nigeria as a country needs to decide right now to change this narrative. In the second of our two-part edition on the 13% derivation and plight of oil producing communities, the three governors of Bayalsa, Cross River and Imo states will be taken to tax on what they have done with the derivation fund their respective administrations receive on a monthly basis from the Federation account. That's Straight Talk. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel to watch the program. I am TV. They have thanks to our partners, Media Dimensions, for their support. And thanks a lot for watching. And goodbye from Abuja. <laughs>